Hey, welcome back guys. We're gonna do cardiac videos, part two. So part two, uh, we're gonna go over more cardiac medications. At the end of the, all these sequences, I'm gonna go through one video that goes over all these cardiac drugs. So just try to stick with me to try to give it in that fast manner. So uh, my name is Nick. I'm a pharmacology instructor, American Heart Association, ACLS and PALS instructor, and I also am an ER nurse. So quantity is that medication we're gonna give for hypertension. It's going to help treat that, but this also is given for uh, kids that have ADD or ADHD in small doses to help them go to sleep at night. So that's why I also remember that this can cause drowsiness. So clonidine can cause drowsiness, but also it can cause a dry mouth. So you want to encourage food if you can or encourage the, somebody to suck on hard candies so they can increase salivation and keep their mouth moist. The next medication are going to be your beta blockers. So with beta blockers, these are medications that have a suffix of OOL or OLOL. These are your OLALs. So this is metoprolol, this is atenolol, this is labetalol, propanolol. Uh, this medica these medications can treat hypertension, but they do work heavy on decreasing your heart rate. I know in school they teach a lot of selective versus non-selective, uh, one heart, two lungs, beta one, beta two cells. Um, with beta blockers, you just kind of want to remember that they decrease your heart rate. So if you remember that thing back from AMP where stroke volume times heart rate equals cardiac output, if you decrease your heart rate, that's going to decrease your cardiac output, which is going to decrease your blood pressure. But adverse effects of this medication, so propanolol specifically, which is non-selective that works on your lungs, you don't want to give it to people that have a history of asthma because it can cause a bronchospasm. But additionally, since they slow down your heart rate, they can decrease your cardiac output which mimics that diagnosis where you have decreased cardiac output, which is heart failure. So look for signs and symptoms of heart failure, like uh, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, um, swelling of the ankles, right? Some edema, but also it's contraindicated for anybody that has a history of asthma, all right? So the next medications are gonna be your antilipemic medications. These are the medications that we're gonna give you for cholesterol, okay? Your cholesterol level, you should know that should be less than 200. Your total cholesterol should be less than 200. Your total cholesterol is made up of your HDLs, your LDLs, and um, your triglycerides. Which ones were your good? Which ones are your bad? Your HDLs are your happy, healthy cholesterol. So the most common medications are going to be your statins. Okay, Your statins, your artorvastatin, your simvastatin. It's like your Crestor, your Lipitor. Uh, this medication is going to be given in the evening, all right, because that's when uh, cholesterol is synthesized actually at night. So uh, with this medication, you're going to be at risk for rhabdomyolysis. And you want to say, what is rhabdomyolysis? Rhabdomyolysis is when you can actually have breakdown of muscle tissue. So if you give somebody with uh, Lipitor to treat their total cholesterol, you want to look out for signs of muscle pain. Muscle pain is a sign of rhabdo, which rhabdo you can... Um, have uh, increased CK levels, your creatinine kinase, creatinine kinase is your CK level, and that can, um, that's a sign that you have arrived in myolysis, which can put you in the renal failure, all right? Also, your uh, atorvastatin and your simvastatin is going to be really bad on your liver, so look for that hepatotoxicity. The next medication is going to be your zetamibe or zetia. This also can cause hepatotoxicity or rhabdomyolysis and you should monitor your CK level. And the last one I wanna uh, recognize is gonna be your Colvacillam uh, or Wellcol. This medication can cause constipation. So I remember Colvacillam, coal has constipation. So increase, uh, anybody at risk for uh, constipation, you wanna give them the same education, increase fluid, fiber, and exercise. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Uh, like and follow, we're gonna go over pretty much uh, plenty more pharma pharmacology. Um, just stick with it.